our world and beyond space in partnership with the European Space Agency. Light is only a tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum of radiation is the domain of Arvind Palmer, who's been in charge of several space astronomy missions for the European Space Agency. The electromagnetic spectrum goes from the radio with the longest wavelengths, that's wavelengths of meters, all the way through the microwave, the infrared, the optical that we're all familiar with, the ultraviolet, X-rays, and then to the very, very highest energies, or shortest wavelengths, the gamma rays. Visible light forms the basis of all types of astronomy, and this year the science has been put in the spotlight. 2009 is officially the International Year of Astronomy. To explore its mysteries, there's no better place to start than the oldest scientific academy in the world, the Academia dei Lincei, or Academy of the Lynxes. One of the Argonauts was called Lynxeos, and is the guy who had a special eyesight which could see through things. And the, the symbol then is that academicians can see with their head and therefore think, they're very clever, they can see with their head well beyond the capacity of eyesight. The professor is a world leader in the field of electromagnetic radiation and relishes spending time in the library of the academy which was founded in 1603. One of its first members was Galileo Galilei whose improvements to the telescope and subsequent observations brought about a revolution in the science of the stars. Four thousand four hundred and forty. Mankind has been doing astronomy, looking at the stars, uh, with the naked eye, for at least four thousand years. And then, exactly four hundred years ago, came Galileo with his telescope in 1609. But now the interesting thing is that since about 40 years, for example, since the moon landing in 1969, we also are doing astronomy from space. And in these 40 years of space astronomy, we have learned more about the universe than in the preceding 400, and of course, than the preceding 4,000. The spectacular advances in technology and scientific research over the past 40 years have given astronomers a vast range of specific types of tools for specific types of observation. Every um, wavelength has a characteristic temperature. That of optical is about 5,000 degrees centigrade, and that's the typical surface temperature of a star. So if you want to study stars, the best way of doing that is in the optical. If you want to look at material that's very, very cold, let's say 100 degrees above absolute zero, the best way of doing that is in the microwave or the infrared. But if you want to study material that's incredibly hot, let's say a million degrees or 10 million degrees hot, then the way you study that best is in the X-ray or the gamma ray. The central goal of astronomy is to discover new galaxies, new star systems, and to understand the phenomena which characterize them. Certainly, the search for extrasolar planets is fundamental. And again, is an example of spectacular acceleration of science. I bet you that in, in 10 years we'll come back in this room to announce the discovery of a new Earth, namely a planet that uh, has the size, the temperature, liquid water, and that is the objective, the direct objective now, which is related to the search of habitable planets and possibly planets far away, but with life on them. Finding the Earth's twin planet, or understanding the mechanisms which led to the emergence of life, is no easy task.
people are not saying, I'm an X-ray astronomer, I'm an ultraviolet astronomer. They're bringing together the information from all the different wavelengths ranges, putting together on the objects, the type of objects that they're interested in. And, and that is because astronomy has moved on from 400 years ago when we only had optical telescopes. All our information came from what, uh, what we learned from optical telescopes. That isn't the case anymore. Data from today's powerful radio telescopes and the latest generation ground-based observatories are now complemented by astronomical satellites. These complex spacecraft, sometimes orbiting millions of kilometers from Earth, can peer into deep space, unhindered by the impurities of the atmosphere or the effects of gravity. I want to be less ignorant. <laughs> I want to understand um, the universe, <laughs> which is a big, a big deal. Of course, I know I cannot understand everything, so I concentrate on some things, but I want to discover the unknown. I was extremely fortunate in my life. I could, in fact, uh, discover few things that were not known before. Okay, And I tell you, there is nothing like the emotion of knowing something that no one knew before. The European Space Agency has two key missions planned for this, the International Year of Astronomy. Planck is a big satellite designed to detect minute microwaves left over from the Big Bang at the beginning of time. And the Herschel Space Telescope will scour the farthest reaches of the universe for infrared images. I think those two uh, will represent uh, really the peak of European astronomy so far. They will allow us to explore the universe from really nearby interstellar clouds, which are very interesting because maybe the big molecules of life are synthesized in these local interstellar clouds all the way through our galaxy and then in the other infinite galaxies around us all the way to the origin of the universe. Astronomers are also on the hunt for a new type of wave whose existence so far has only been predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. The European Space Agency and NASA want to discover gravity waves with a joint project they call LISA. Three satellites will form a triangle millions of kilometers apart, firing laser beams at each other. If the beams are disrupted, Einstein was right. Gravitational waves uh, are not yet part of astronomy, but we're hoping with the launch of LISA in a few years' time that they will become part of astronomy. Because LISA, we hope, is going to be sensitive to things like two black holes when they uh, coalesce, when they rotate around each other and coalesce into one bigger black hole, they give off lots and lots of gravitational radiation. And we'll be looking for events like that with LISA and following up with other telescopes on the ground and in space to, to understand what's going on. Proving that gravity waves exist would open whole new fields of astronomical research, adding extra dimensions to today's electromagnetic data. The goal for astronomers of the 21st century is to fill in the missing pages in the story of the universe.